We're joined today on realtorculture.com by Jonathan Drigger. He is with FarmLink Marketing Solutions based out of Winnipeg. Welcome today, Jonathan. Thank you, Sean. Jonathan, last week, uh, the USDA, what many have described as shocked the market um, in terms of uh, some of their corn uh, yield estimates and, and some of the follow-up commentary they have on carryout. What, after, you know, a couple days of trading here, what can we sort of take out of what this, what impact this report has had on the market? Well, I, I, I guess in, in summary, you can say that, uh, I mean, really, the, the corn market is a bit of a problem here in, in the sense that we, we, we really, uh, the market is telling us that we really got to ration a lot of demand here. And, and that's what it's, that's what it's trying to do. Uh, quite simply, uh, you know, the, the, there's just not enough supply out there. The kind of carry out that USDA is projecting, uh, I mean, it's, it's just below minimum pipeline stocks and, and somewhere along the line, demand needs to be, uh, needs to be rationed out. And, and the only way that happens is through higher prices. So, I guess you know what what can we expect here? You know we've had we've had uh, like you said it's a bit quieter today in the trade, uh, but uh, we did have three or you know we had a couple days here of, of you know definitely moving upwards. Can we expect that this is going to kind of be the trend here, or is this just a quick trade and we'll we'll move back lower? No, you know I I think this could potentially have some some legs to it. I, I mean we always have to be a little cautious about being naively bullish. Uh, I, I suppose things always look uh, look the most bullish when you're at the top. But but you know ha- having said that, uh, you know the, I mean really the, this corn market is genuinely very very tight and and to a certain extent so are the soybeans and and, and maybe not so much on the wheat. But but even so we you know some of the problems in the wheat market over the past six months are fairly well advertised and and so uh, quite frankly. Uh, uh, there's there's demand rationing that has to take place, and and I don't know that that prices are high enough yet in the corn market to do that to the extent that it it has to happen. So so where is uh, all the demand coming from, or is it just a lack of supply? Well, you know, it, it, I mean, the demand has always always been there, and uh, it, it it's one of those that, that uh, you know the market always knew that uh, that that the balance for corn was. Uh, was relatively tight going forward, and uh, and we always needed a big corn crop. And initially, it looked like we were going to get a big corn crop uh, with crop conditions in good shape and good rains and so forth. And so, it's been over the last uh, last month when these uh, when the combines have been rolling, and everyone realized, geez, you know, the bushels maybe just aren't there from what we're expecting. A lot of uh, anecdotal reports of corn yields coming in very disappointing, and so uh, uh, that just got confirmed with that USDA report. So it, it's not that the demand has suddenly appeared. Uh, rather, leading up to this report, you know, the perception was that, that the supply would be there to uh, to cover that demand. It was always known that it would be uh, uh, fairly, how to say, maybe fairly well balanced. You know, there wasn't a lot of room to to, uh, to have any slip on the supply. But if the bushels were there, you know, it would carry us for another year. But now that those bushels aren't there, to the extent that anyone thought. Uh, somewhere along the line, we we got to we got to ratchet that demand down, and uh, to the extent that the livestock industry is already downsized quite a bit, uh, export demand for corn is going to be higher based on uh, less coarse grain around the world with uh, with the problems in the Black Sea region. Uh, a lot of the ethanol demand is is mandated. Some of it's discretionary, so we might be able to to ration some most likely out of out of that industry. But it, but in the end, it's it's not there's not a lot of Easy or low-hanging fruit de- demand that's that's easily rationed away, and that's part of the reason why prices have, have spiked so high. Or, you know, uh, 80 cents in, in the last few days since the report, and uh, and quite possibly uh, more to go. So I guess sometimes we see you know isolated rallies where um, it's it's one commodity or one crop that that just moves, uh, even if the rest of the market really doesn't. Um, in, in the case, you know, corn is obviously a major staple crop for uh, North American farmers. Do you think that this uh, movement in corn or this continued movement in corn is going to kind of drag all of the farm commodities with it? Or, you know, you mentioned wheat is kind of lagging, but uh, can we expect uh, soybeans and canola to, to follow? You know, to a certain extent, it, it will, and uh, of course, most of, uh, rightfully so, I guess, most of the attention was on the on the corn numbers in in last week's USDA report. But uh, you know, even with soybeans, for example, they lowered the yield a little bit. Everyone was expecting an increase. They lowered the acres, which wasn't necessarily a shock. But uh, uh, you know, we have a carryout that's also tightened up a little bit on the soybeans. 
Now, the soybean market may be okay if we put off, uh, you know, pull off a big crop in South America here coming up this winter. Uh, but if we have any kind of a, a production threat in South America, and there are some early season concerns, and it is early, so it, it's it's too early to get too excited or concerned about how the size of that South American crop. But if we start running into some problems down there, you know, that kind of uh, puts more pressure on the U.S. to get those soybean acres in the ground. In the meantime, we know that corn desperately needs more acres, and so really you are setting yourselves up for, for an acreage battle here. So uh, in terms of, of how many acres corn needs, because this market is now so much tighter, you know that backs into uh, squeezing out some soybean acres, but the soybean market's not in a position that it can afford to give up that many acres. So it, it kind of does back into, into all crops to at least a certain extent. Uh, how many spring wheat acres are going to get lost to corn next spring, for example, in the U.S., those sorts of things. So it's, uh, there are ripple effects that spread out across all crops. And, so uh, so I, if, if we jump back, or I guess we jump into, from a Canadian perspective, and specifically to uh, livestock producers or, you know, buyers of these coarse grains um, to, f- to feed livestock, what, based on the harvest that we've had, um, and a lot of speculation about the amount of feed wheat that's going to be out there, uh, obviously, people wondering about the barley yields. Now, with this kind of information on the corn, where, where, how, how should feed uh, feed yard or hog producers? How should they be looking at this market? Well, if I was a feed user, uh, I would certainly be looking at, at getting some some coverage here. Uh, I think that the feed prices that we're seeing in Western Canada for feed wheat and feed barley are are undervalued. Uh, I think what we will see going forward is maybe some uh, some some more of these grains getting exported offshore. I think international values justify seeing movement offshore at prices quite a bit higher than what domestic bids are currently showing. And as long as this corn market stays very strong, you know there is demand for uh, uh, and where the economics might work to to export feed wheat, for example, in in possibly sizable volume and at, at values that are are above what what the cash market is showing today. So if I was a if I was a feed grain user, uh, given that our cash markets are I think relatively undervalued, uh, I would certainly be looking at getting some coverage. Now you know having said all that, uh, with the supplies that are out there. Could prices work lower going forward? I, I suppose it's possible, but but I, I think the risk is greater to the upside to the point that I would be I'd be pretty uncomfortable if I was a feed grain user and I, I didn't really have uh, much for forward coverage on. I, I would be getting uh, at least a good chunk of my needs covered. I, I think our cash prices are undervalued relative to uh, certainly what uh, uh, what they're worth internationally, you know, relative to corn and, and given the fact that some of these uh, cheap, readily accessible supplies out of the Black Sea region just simply aren't available this year. So one of the things that I think a lot of producers are, are you know, we, we've talked about, you know, the impact of, of last uh, last week's USDA report, and there's been a lot of criticism of the USDA. There's also been a lot of criticism of some of the reporting that Stats Can has done uh, through this summer. Uh, wh- why, why are we getting uh, these reports now, where the market is reacting in such a in such a violent fashion? We're we're getting more. Well, that's a little bit surprising. Or people saying. You know, I, I don't believe that information whatsoever because I, what I'm, I'm seeing something different on the ground. What, what's going on with, our, with the reporting of, these, of this information? Well, that's, that's a good question, and I guess I don't have a really great answer for you uh, uh, in, in regards to the specifics. I, I know there certainly is a lot of frustration out there, uh, with, uh, particularly in these last two USDA reports. And, and you know, ultimately, uh, you know, maybe the USDA is, is still sort of the authority, and, and they're the numbers they give you, the numbers you got to work with, and they're maybe the best numbers out there, although certainly they've, they've been catching, uh, you know, catching everybody off guard these last couple, couple reports. And so... Uh, um, you know, I, I don't know if I, I don't have any uh, specific or easy answer for you, but but certainly I, I think there's there's a lot of a lot of frustration in the trade that these numbers seem to uh, to shift so dramatically and and seemingly so out of sync with what uh, what people on the ground and in the trade and who are close to it would uh, would would estimate. So yeah. it's it certainly has has created a lot of a lot of confusion, uh, and uh, and as a result, there's been a lot of erratic market moves around these reports as everyone gets caught off guard. For sure. Okay, John, thanks very much for uh, joining us today, and we'll talk to you uh, very soon again. My pleasure. Thanks a lot.